Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. We appreciate that. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you for Brother Curtis, come on up here. Amen. Get up there, Curtis. I was watching you play the drums there. And I, I know you some, and you've been coming down here a long time in the worship team, and uh, you got married a few days ago. How many? Yeah, uh, three. Yeah. About three. And you have your second baby on the way. All right. Oh, He's busy. Yeah. Busy. <laughs> he's 25 years old. 25. And he's a soldier of Christ. That's right. And he's been walking with the Lord for some time. Amen. And when he, I was watching him play the drums there, I was, I was thinking, man, how, how critical is it that we have people his age and, and yes. actor like Bella? Come on. How critical is it that That's we have right. people his age uh, coming forth and, That's right. and rising to the call and coming forth to the occasion and Amen. being used by God yes. and, and growing yeah. and... Um, and yeah. it, it's, it's just critical. I could say so many things, but I wanted to just ask you to briefly, mm -hmm. uh, what's what's the Lord been putting on your heart lately? Uh, you know, what's something that you can quickly just put out to the people? Because we, we need to hear, from all ages, I'm a firm believer. Amen. If, if they're 90, if they're That's 70, right. if they're 50, it's all important. Uh, That's right. And this is the next generation. That's right. So That's critical right. that yes. we have strong soldiers of, of Christ That's right. coming up. Because you're the next leader. That's right. You, know, you're, you guys, you, these are the next leaders coming forward. Yeah. What's the Lord been showing you? Yes. Uh, one thing that I've kind of really had to, you know, something, because I, I grew up in the church, um, not to say I was born a Christian, because we all, we have, we all have to come to the age where we accept Jesus for our for ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, Come on, brother. Come that's on. Right. We, you know, our, our parents have nothing to do with our salvation. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, so this is something that I, I grew up being taught, mm -hmm. but now I've really <laughs> been experiencing just how, how much we have to be Christ, really, to the world. Praise uh, God. You know, we're, we could be all anyone ever sees. We could be all that's some, right. some specific person sees of, of Jesus. You know that's right. Um. And so I, I think specifically in the workplace is something God's been um, showing me how I, I need to, in, in my work ethic. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's something we, we so you overlook. Go. You know, what, is, yeah. what does God have to do with work, right? That's right, come on. But when, when people see, you know, we're being lazy, whatever, we're, we're cutting corners the same way they are. Yep, come on, come on bro, right. tell it. Exactly, yeah. Um, so I think that's a huge thing that, that God's been working in me. Um, not that it, maybe I never was a terrible worker necessarily, but even yeah. even more, I need to step up. You know, yeah. I, I think that's really something, especially in my generation, something that we lack. You know, yeah. so I, it, that's something that takes God to work in us, and we we got to submit that to you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, we, we could all step up. Yeah. 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 We could all use a stepping up and all. That's right. And I can tell you this: the best most powerful way for you to lead and for I to lead is by example. What people see you do. The words coming out of your mouth, yes, those are important. But the example that you set before others, your lifestyle, who you are, the way you are, the example people set, the, the example you set is so important. Yeah. So welcome to Peacemakers International. So good to see you. John the Baptist. So good to see you. That's your biblical name. I'm just. Oh I'm yeah. Uh, all right. All right. John. What's happening, John Jr.? I think of hey, John man. the Baptist. Uh, good to see you. Hey, Amen. <laughs> so. In the wilderness, brother. Announcements. We appreciate the worship team. Amen, Mark. Amen. 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 First announcement will be this, is that this Tuesday night and a couple nights at 7 p.m., we're having a service. Uh, we have what we, we call a Peacemakers North service. 
out in the Hall Road M59 Van Dyke area. We use the facilities of Fisherman's Net uh, once a month for now, once a month. So it's the third Tuesday, third Tuesday evening of every month, 7 p.m. We have a service. Uh, if you can, come on out and check it out. Uh, Brother Mark and the gang will be leading worship there. Pastor Amen. Steve will mm -hmm. be sharing a word, and it's a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to do that every Tuesday night out there, uh, particularly before COVID, I think. And then uh, right now we're just doing once a month and uh, seeing where that goes. But it's just a good time, different settings. So, so again... Um, that's at a church called Fisherman's Net. Great ministry, by the way. We know a lot of them. Yeah. And, uh, but they let us use that book. And we'll be doing a service out there 7 p.m. Yeah. Just so people know that. Let me get out my announcements here. So we have a few guests tonight from Hope City Church. All right, all right, all right. Amen. Cone Township, okay. Cone Township, all right. I've been wrong before once or twice. Yeah, yeah. All right. And uh, we, now, I I should have recorded the, the I know I got your name, Miss Mayors, but uh, you, the, past, the pastor of Hope City is here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what's your name there, sir? Mike, Mike Dean. Pastor Mike, so it's yeah. really good to see you. Amen. Amen. Very well. Thanks for coming. Come on up and briefly yeah. share about Amen. some things Go. that they have brought down yes. uh, to give away tonight. Yes. Whatever's out of heart. Hello, peacemakers. Amen. Amen. Thank you for warmly welcoming us and for allowing us to spend some time with you, praising God for who He is and for what He has done. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, um, so tonight, um, we bring some representatives from our women's ministry. Our brand new women's ministry. All right. All right. And, um, so the ladies have been busy, and they have uh, homemade cookies for everybody. To uh oh. Take home with them. We have packages. They're already packaged for you. And we have some warm socks, some hats, and some gloves for you to take as well to keep you warm and cozy. And um, we also brought some goodies for tonight, some cheap cakes. Woo. So I hope you enjoy all that. We want to thank you very much for allowing us to serve you and for having this wonderful, joyous evening. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, so thank you so girl. We're passing all that out after service, uh, Antonio, and, and you may already have a plan worked out. But if you could just get with them for the dynamics of how that goes out. They have a bunch of boxes of stuff in the kitchen. However, however you can help them move that along. Uh, yeah, Antonio. Amen. Uh, and, uh, yeah. One other announcement is uh, we do have a Thursday evening service here. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a great service uh, mm -hmm. in case anyone has not been down for that. And I'm just putting it out there that beginning in 2022, we have a new year coming. Yeah, we 2022, oh, really? Beginning in 2022, we're going to start the Thursday evening service at 6 p.m. instead of 7. Okay? It's been at 7 for a long, long time. But uh, we're going to move that to 6 for now, just like Sunday evening is at 6. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 All right, well, Essex, like, Jeremiah, you're getting stressed with all these changes. Yeah. I'm supposed to keep up with this. Yeah. I, I, I just type it all into my phone. Yeah. That's how I remember. Yeah. Every, everything goes into a calendar, especially these days. And once you get married, you better believe everything. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh oh. Get reminders. Uh oh. And the, see, the technology helps because we can sync our calendars. Is that true? Once you get married, you got to. We're just uh. using them joint calendars. To go <laughs> a long way. Uh. It's necessary for people like me that can't remember it all. Amen. It burnt up a few brain cells back in the day. Yeah. Amen. Smoking Amen. stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. All right, why don't we get into taking up the hour again? Maybe we need yeah. to hear a testimony on that, huh? Uh, like to hear that? Yeah, we'll have to hear that. Amen. All right. Well, 
that is good. Good to see you, Brother Kenneth. Saw that you were at the range. Yeah. Um, yeah, you had shared. I wanted to click like on the picture, but it was shared in the. Uh, it was the story. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and I tend to not really. Uh, yeah. I guess you can't go in there and click like. Yeah. I was just looking for a quick one. I didn't see. Like, oh, I like that. My mom went with me. I think too. that's cool. My mom went with me too. Yeah. That's even years. cooler. Yeah. First time mom <laughs> shot a handgun. All right. All right. Shot hey, a mom, what? Go a handgun. <laughs> Yeah, you hear that? <laughs> ah, well, well, well. We do believe in our Second Amendment uh, rights to peacefully and lawfully Amen. carry Amen. firearms, be responsible. We're not talking about committing crimes with the firearms, but it is something that we have a right to do. And we can be responsible, right? We just need to be responsible. Right, Trish? Ever, you ever met any irresponsible people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, we're going to pray over the... Uh, I was gonna say, oh, boy. It's it's getting crazy here, brother. <laughs> Got to watch Lord. that stuff. We're going to pray over the offering. <laughs> Lord, thank you for... Yes, Lord. Thank you for this offering. Thank you for this time of day. <laughs> it's very important, actually. We thank, thank you, Father, Lord for Jesus. providing every dollar. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That this ministry needs to make the wheel continue to go round. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, ladies, go ahead. These buildings don't heat themselves on their own. The lights don't come on by some magical wand being waved. But there are utility companies that must be faithfully paid. Month in, month out. Vehicle insurances, vehicle fuel. Other materials, other supplies, on and on and on. This is the real world and things do cost money. And we need to be responsible with money. I think we need to learn, all of us, how to be um, faithful and responsible and good stewards with money. And once God knows that he can trust you with a little, right? Maybe. He may be ready to move us up more, but Man. first we have to be found faithful in the world of things. That'll preach. But Lord, the only duty I have right now is cleaning the peacemaker's bathroom. Be faithful in that, my son. Do a good job with that, my son. That's right. Go the extra mile. Scrub those baseboards. Scrub those toilets. That's and, right. And I, and I would say that uh, I Come know on. that our guys uh, are on top of that well. But, but I'm using that as an example, right? We be faithful, be faithful with what God has put in you. Has God put a bridge card in your hands? Be faithful with that. You know? You, utilizing that well. Not doing anything, you know, sketchy with it. Using it how it should be used. Be faithful with what God's put in your hands and God will give you more. I've heard that somewhere. Amen. All right, so uh, I think that's it for announcements, unless any of the staff can remind me of anything I'm missing, any announcements? Well, one of the staff here, a guy named Noah, the sound guy, mm -hmm. when you mentioned something about back in the day, he said something about he needs to share a little of his testimony, because everybody thinks you were that straight arrow guy. You've grown a beard, and you might think you were a hippie, but I don't know. So could you give us a few minutes of... Uh, a little testimony that God would give you, and I'll tail end on you know it's all good. Yeah, yeah, sure. You're a new Absolutely. married man too. You know we need to hear a little bit about that. From single and 43 years single to a married man, dear Lord. Everything you've always wanted. They get tired of me, Mark. <laughs> hey, Amen. Amen. Well. Crazy Here's Jesus. the bottom line. You know, it's kind of like what Curtis said. Curtis said he grew up in the church, uh, but nevertheless, you said something like, my parents can't get me to God. I have to get connected with Jesus myself. And that's what you said. And yeah. that, of course, was my experience, too. I've been in church my entire life. Ever since being a baby, I have been taken to church. Mm. When I was a kid, I was taken. I, 
But just because you come into a church building doesn't make you a Christian any more than you going into a garage that does not make you a car. Make sense? So just because we hang out in a church like this, um, it doesn't make us a Christian. It doesn't mean we know Jesus. So I was taken to church, which is a good thing. I mean, that's that's a great blessing for anyone that's been privileged to be uh, raised like that. Uh, but, but without question, you know, getting older into my teenage years, what starts to happen? What happened to most of us or all of us? You know, the world... The, the, the ways, the, the world, the, the lures that, that Satan dangles in front of us. You know, Satan on, likes to dangle on. these shiny lures in front of our faces. Things that look good, sound good, things that initially might feel good. You, you ever gone fishing before? You have a rod and reel and you cast the, the lure right. in the line. What are you doing? You're, you're, you're putting in front of the fish some bait that looks good to him. You're hoping he bites it, but if he bites it, he's going to get caught. Right? On a hook. So Satan has dangled bait in front of our eyes. The Bible in 1 John chapter 2 uh, talks about all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So we've all experienced that, right? You know, Trish, you grew up in church too, didn't you? And you got your own story, no question about it. But what happened? We started to get older, and Satan dangles his bait. And even though our parents told us and warned us, and even though we heard it in Sunday school and church, we had the bright idea that we still got to try it ourselves, didn't we, Trish? So we did, and at first it feels good. Because sin does have pleasure for a season. Okay, that's what the Bible says. Now here's another phrase that's not in the Bible, but it's so, so true. And some of you will, will know this, is that sin, Steve, sin will take you farther than you wanted to go. It will keep you longer than you wanted to stay. And it will cost you more than you wanted to pay. Amen. Come on. I'll say that one more time for all you note takers. Because if anybody's been there, done that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. Come on. Sin, everyone say sin. Sin. Sin will take you farther than you wanted to go. You know, we have our great initial ideas. Oh, I'll just do this for a little bit. Oh, I'll just try. Oh, just this one time I'll try it. Sin will take you farther than you wanted to go. It will keep you longer than you wanted to stay. Yeah. And it will cost you more than you wanted to pay. Yeah. Amen. Let's talk about that second phrase. A yeah. Sin yeah. will keep you longer than you wanted to say. How many of you have experienced that where you became enslaved by sin and trapped in the bondage of something that, wait, well, I didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah. It kept me longer than I wanted to say. <laughs> Yes, sir. And ultimately, it costed me more than I wanted to pay. See, Satan doesn't tell you that, all that stuff. He doesn't tell you about the devastating fruit. That Come on, read. tell it. Yeah, read you know? the small print. He, he just shows you the cover of the magazine. Yeah. You know, this girl in a bikini on a magazine, that's the kind of thing that Satan dangles in front of your face. Mm hmm but he doesn't show you the rest of the treachery and the, the misery and the, right. the, the, the chaos and the mind workedness oh. that, that results after delving in that and whatever else you mean. So people like Trish and I, I mean, I know the rest of you are a bunch of saints and angels. And yeah, and yeah, kids. yeah. All the choir kids back there. Y'all ain't yeah. never messed up. Well, oh. I can tell you Trish and I. Yeah, I know. No, none of these guys mess so up. We, huh? yeah. we heard the sermons. Be like, you know what I need to do? 
go find out for myself, Noah. I'm going to find out for myself. You know, I've heard all these yeah. warnings from my dad on yeah. weed's a gateway drug, and it's going to lead you to this. Yeah, come on. Lead you to that. But, I, but that ain't going to happen to me. Oh. That ain't going to happen What do you think, me. man, huh? <laughs> and so, you know, we, we try things, and we, we bite the hook. We bite the bait and mm. Satan dangled in front of us. Mm -hmm. This is what humans do. Humans do it over and over and over. Mm. And so I had to have my own period of, of, of rocky roads and backslidings and in and out. And, you know, and at the time, this would be, I'm kind of zeroing in on just a certain time period of my life. Uh, this would be in the mid to late 90s. And this place was a brand new place for us. The new Peacemakers was being planted fresh off the grill um, in the mid 90s. So as Pastor Steve's trying to do all that, you know, I'm helping sometimes and going back and forth in the world sometimes. And ultimately, ultimately, you ever heard the story about the prodigal son? In the Bible? Yep. This yep. is a story in the Bible. Luke 15. A man had two sons. One son came to him, Father, I want my early inheritance. So the father gave in to that request. And that son took his early inheritance and he foolishly spent it. And he, this is a 2021 version. Uh, the son took that early inheritance, all that money and he went to vegas man and he just lived it up he lived it up with the, the casinos and, and with the hookers and with the, the lines of cocaine he just lived it up party time and as long as the money and the drugs is flowing all you're getting the girls are all going to be around you and you're going to oh yeah everywhere. that's right everyone's that's gonna right want to be your oh friend. yeah yeah as long as the dope and yep. money and all that oh, yeah. on. Come on. But there's a funny thing that happened is that all those people start to jump ship and abandon you once the cash starts to dry. Right. Come on, tell it. And he began to find himself alone with no money, no dope, no food, no the female companions that were so excited to be with him are now gone. Yeah. Now he's alone and he's broke. And he's hungry, all right? And he gets so desperate, he ends up winding, working in a pig pen. And he's hitting rock bottom. He's hitting rock bottom. You see the effects of sin. The tape is starting to play out. The tape is starting to play out. And this is what had happened with me, too, as many of you. The tape's playing out, and he's hitting rock bottom. He's finding himself with, with the pigs, and he's, and he's hungry. He's like, oh, my God. Now I realize what I've done. I had it better in my father's house. And that's what, of course, uh, in a sense, happened to me. And I, I know it happened to a couple more of you, like Brother Joel and others. <laughs> but we, we, we bit Satan's bait. He took us for a ride. All right. And then we ended up broke, busted, disgusted. Dopeless, hopeless, yeah. all that. Right. Mm -hmm. And we we hit a rock bottom, right? I guess I'm telling all of our stories. Yeah, we on, hit bro. a rock bottom, and we find our ourselves in these places of desperation. Yeah. Yep. We find ourselves as the tapes played on, and some months and years tick yep. by. Yep. We find ourselves in some desperate places, feeling yeah. hopeless, feeling depressed feeling suicidal and all sorts of different things depending on whatever your story is fill in the blank and, and, and it's amazing because you see it's in God's mercy and grace that he allows us to reach those low points because it brings us to our needs our knees and these are all great steps on how a human being comes to Jesus and finds Jesus Praise See, we, we got to be broken of ourselves. We have to be, yep. we have to taste of this world 
mm -hmm. in the world system. We have to taste of sin enough to end up knowing, man, this fruit tastes bad. Right. Like, really bad. And Trish, when you get to this point where you know, man, this stuff tastes bad, bad, then all of a sudden, wow. Then God's like, oh, now they're ready. Now they're ready for something different. Because before, they wasn't ready. You ain't going to turn around. Come on. You ain't going to be ready for a true change in Jesus. That's right. Until we've hit some low place right. to where we become Sick and tired of being, being sick, sick and, and tired. tired. That's Are right. you oh. sick and tired Come of on. being sick and tired? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Some people haven't hit that place yet. Some that's people right. are still in that place where I'm still kind of finding some comfort in this. God wants to show you the emptiness, the yeah. vanity, yeah. the disease, yeah. the pain. You ever felt pain is an effect of your sin? Uh -huh. mm. Pain is a motivator. Pain can be a good thing if it leads me to the cross. Praise. Jesus, I need you. Thank Jesus, you. I need a Savior. Jesus, wash me from my sins in your blood. So we hit that point, and I throw up through my own story, all of you have a your own story to tell. And I had my story, man, where I hit the lows and sick and tired of this. And then one day, I could describe it like this. It was in 1998, uh, I, I believe about the beginning of November of 1998. I hit a point, something snapped at me. Something snapped at me. And I was sick of all this. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I just wanted to commit my life over to God. And I wanted to do that and I didn't care anymore. And nothing was going to get in my way. Nothing was going to stop me at that point. And I turned the keys over to Jesus. That was in 1998. And so... The same God that did it for me yes. will do it for you. God is no Amen. respect of persons. That's right. Jesus loves you and the devil hates you. God has a plan for your life and so does the devil. God has a plan for you to rescue you like he rescued me. The drowning man over there in that picture up on the wall. It's a great picture. There's a man drowning, and he is unable to help himself. We are unable to help ourselves. You can't help yourself. You cannot save yourself. You are drowning. If you haven't like truly met Christ yet, believe me, you are drowning, and you need a Savior. You need a Savior. And he's able to save. He is able to to heal, to forgive, yeah. to yeah. restore, yeah. to make all things on, You got a water for me? Right? Right, Marcus? I open. You have any words of wisdom for us, Marcus, to come on up and say? Mm -hmm. Before we get Pastor Steve up here? Come on, man. Yeah! Come on, Marcus. Yeah, tell him what you told him. Go ahead, Marcus. You got to tell it. Marcus, don't be stubborn now. Let that voice cry out. This is your chance before you go to be with the Lord. Amen. Well, hey, well. Marcus, we love everyone here. Let's give him a hand. He's always a man of few words. Yeah. Um, and that's a good thing. There's a lot of the Bible. 
All right, so it's time to turn the keys of our lives over to Jesus. Amen. I was asked for my testimony, and I kind of gave a... Oh, I made a step, right? Uh, you're going to... Uh, Pastor Steve is come up, coming on up here at this point, and so it's going to be whatever he wants, bro. Hi, Mom. How you doing? Are we going to take up the offer? I think we already did, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we did. We Great did. The brink security chunk already picked it up off. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give Jesus a hand. Amen. Praise God. God is good. What's up? Women's ministry is on New Year's Day, right here at 2 o'clock, right? Amen. Mark, good to see you. I watched some of that service. Watch Sister Kate McVeigh preach and encouraging the troops today. And uh, you're a blessing, brother. It's been, what, about two months since your daddy went to be with the Lord? And uh, Lord, we just thank you for Mark. We thank you for the ministry, Father. You said, if any man minister, let him minister as of the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I just want him to take the mic for a few minutes and just share about his transition. I know he's probably saying, Pastor Steve, why are you putting me on the spot? Because we're on Shane Street. That's the way it happens. Because I love Mark and we love Mark. And Just sit right there. You don't have to get up, Mark. And just talk to us a few minutes about... Uh, What's been going on in your mind since your dad left? Because you do have to, the, the responsibility is now on your shoulders, right? And there's a lot in your mind. You got kids, you got to take care of mom. This is not an easy boat to row. People see you up here leading in worship, they have no idea how hard it is, the struggles. And I, for one, and Jeremiah, for one, and others here, we really appreciate the fact that you pushed through, you did a service this morning. You come down here, you got a lot waiting on you at home, and yet you lead in worship, and you've always done a good job. And I've always looked at you as one of the main people that we love to have lead worship because you lead uh, in a spirit of true worship. And the book of John says that the Father seeks such to worship Him, those that would worship Him in spirit and in truth. Just take this for a few, just share from your heart for a few minutes, just maybe... Some of the things, keeping it real, like Jeremiah just kept it real, on, uh, you know, how it's been since since Dad's been gone. Just from your heart. God bless you all. God bless you. <laughs> it worked before. <laughs> it worked from <before. laughs> Praise God. They never make it easy on the pastor. <laughs> uh, I could, I could, I could lie to everybody and say it's been easy and life is a bed of roses. And, but uh, I've been, I've been searching for that scripture. I've never been able to find that one oh. where God says how easy this. This life's gonna be, and right, 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 right. Uh, if anybody finds that one, let me. Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> well, we've had we've had challenges. I just you, I just got a text from home with a new challenge. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day. We all have to come to that place and say, you know, either you're going to go full board and you're going to do what God wants you to do no matter what, or you're not. And uh, I've found that one of, the, one of the blessings is that sometimes the things that you thought in your mind you couldn't survive, with God's help, you can and sometimes that's all you need is just to to know that God is there with you every step. I know you've had challenges, we've all had challenges, and it seems like we've had a lot of challenges recently. And um, 
you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to lie. There are some days that uh, <laughs> you just want to, you want to go back into bed and just say, you know, Lord, I, you know, I need a break. But uh, there's another part of me that, that knows that if I'm going to honor God and honor my dad, that the best way to do that is to move forward. Amen. Who wants to talk now? <laughs> so that's, you know, sometimes I found that's enough. You know, that some days it's, it's enough to just say, God, I'm going to keep at it, and I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep trusting in you. No matter what, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what obstacle, that I'm going to keep pushing, and that's what I'm going to do. And that means that I'm going to be here, and I'm going to be at church, and I promised my dad that as long as there's breath in my body, I'm going to go. Amen. You know, I was talking to somebody, I think, today, Mark, and uh, everybody knows your dad's pastor. Your man in ministry is the head pastor forever and a day. And uh, somebody asked me, well, uh, is Mark the pastor now? Well, he is the pastor. He's under his dad, but he's a worship leader. He's never been in the pulpit preaching. He says he can be preaching. I go, well, you know, I know the struggles you face. You have different people coming in. It's hard. But I know there's an anointing on you, Mark. Amen. And if you ever feel led to step into that pulpit, you'd have the goods. Amen. You know, maybe you can get some help with your worship team or whatever, but I know this is hard on you. But again, the devil's our enemy, and your dad taught us that. And I don't know if there's ever been a desire in you to preach the word. You know, it's maybe easier to sit and just let the anointing flow through you and play the guitar and let dad preach. But I'll tell you what, there's a spirit in you, brother, that you've got a lot to say. I'm going to tell you something. You've learned a lot. And that anointing, like it's flowed through me, through Jeremiah, down to the seed. Your dad was that righteous seed that raised you up. And that anointing's in you. So I don't want you to second guess if you feel that little nudge. And instead of getting something to preach, sometimes say, you know what, I'm going to do it next Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been sensing that a little taste. And I think you just open that little preaching up by taking the microphone on. I want to say thank you. But you're loved greatly, Mark. And we're behind you. And Jeremiah and I have talked any way we can help you to keep that ministry going, to get involved, to get a crew over there, maybe to help draw some younger people, whatever, we're on board with you 100%. Because you've always been, you've been peanut butter and jelly dust through the thick and thin. You, you, you've been one with us. And we mean that from our hearts. So anything we can do, but healing for the nation is going to continue to go on. But start praying and thinking about it. I'm sure it's hit you and maybe you want to deflect it because, man, you're doing so much now. you got mom, you got the kids. You got the responsibilities, you got the bills. You got a lot on your plate, man. You've had a lot of burdens that you've carried for many years. But the Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So we want to be from Peacemakers International. I'm saying this officially right now, letting you know how we feel. I think you might know this already, but we're here to bear your burdens and help you fulfill the call of God in your life. And whatever it takes, financially, help, manpower, we got enough around here where we can help you to do whatever you got to do to achieve whatever God wants you to do in Jesus' name. That's right. So we love you, man. You're a blessing. You're special. And uh, we're going to keep moving ahead. Amen. God bless you, brother. We love you, man. We love you. Special God. Special mama. You know, as Kate was sharing today, I pretty much listened to that whole message and then saw some of the worship. I was thinking, because she's been around the block forever and a day. I, I don't know how old she is now, I'm not going to say, but she's been around. When she was 15 years old, I used to counsel her and talk to her. <laughs> she used to help host our TV program once in a while. I'd say, uh, 
Kate, why don't you run it with my wife? I'm going to sit back and they run the New Life TV program. She's always been a real good girl. She's been all over the world. God's used her in a mighty way. But she's there for you, too. And I know she had a lot of words of encouragement for you because that's her. You know, she's encouraged her to the bone. And, uh, you know, she's just a really good girl. But I was listening to the things she was saying today. And she said something about, yeah, healing for the nation is going to continue. That's what this church is called, healing for the nations. Your dad got that word, the ministry's in your hand. It's going to continue to be healing to the nations. And uh, I thank God that God surrounded you with some people that are positive because more than ever, you do need that. You don't need somebody singing the blues so bad, feeling so bad about you that they, they uh, bury, you, <laughs> bury you with their tears. But our tears are being shed for you. Our hearts are crying for you. But on the other hand, our hands are out to lift you up and see you move forward. And whatever we can do, trust me when I tell you, Jeremiah, I'll tell you, we're there for you in Jesus' name. Do or die, we're going to see this through to the end. Peacemakers and healing for the nations are one body. Like Jeremiah only, always says, there's only one church. And I'll tell you what, people out there may not believe it because we aren't their flavor. We don't preach like they are. But you and us, we're committed to bone because we're one in Christ. Amen. And our blood runs the same, and we're with you all the way through. So, you do the better. You know, uh, you know, God's good. I know Noah just lost his mother and other things going here. The struggles he's had with moving and everything. There's a lot of people here going through a lot of things. And, of course, we don't know everybody's story. I've seen this guy, uh, Noah, coming from the homeless shelter. Uh, for, come up here a minute. Come up here for a minute. I was going to tell no, but I might as well tell everybody. So he's come out. I've noticed him like we noticed people. He's been out a bit, coming here and there. And I went out and talked to him yesterday. I talked to a, a number of people more intensely than normal because you try, you know, you spread yourself thin, but spend a lot of conversation. And uh, I found out this guy's got some interesting gifts. Could you talk to us for a minute about maybe where you've been in life and what, what uh, things, you know what you told me about some things you can do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us your name first. It's Brandon. Okay, Brandon, where are you from? Um, from Westland, but I grew up in Detroit. Okay. And right now, <laughs> you're over at uh, Team Wellness? Team Wellness, Mackinac Elliott. Okay, so you've been there for a minute? Yeah, a couple months. And obviously, everybody in Team Wellness, like everywhere, has a story why they're there, you know, what their expectations, their dreams, their hopes, <coughs> desires are. you got all that going on too. But there's something you told me that I was interested because in, you never know what's in them packages out there. Right? You know, sometimes people think because they're in a homeless shelter, oh, they don't have any skills, you know. They, they, you know, I've said this through the years, there are lawyers, there are business people. In fact, Phil Weber just sent me a text today. He just moved to Kalamazoo, sold his business, sold his house, 27 acres, beautiful, I can't believe it. But he just went out there with his wife to be with their daughter. And uh, he just told me the story. So, and he's known people with a lot of money through the years because of the world he's in and Romeo and, you know, rubbing shoulders with people. But he told me, Pastor Steve, I just met a man that uh, had more money than anybody ever met. And was somebody that had some business and money like $180 million. And he said, this guy just lost every penny and everything he had. He is stone cold broke, basically. And he was just sharing this with me. And he don't blow smoke. Phil don't blow. And he says, I've never met a guy with this much money that lost that much stuff. But where his heart is, and the guy right now is saying how blessed he is. Because in that, like Jeremiah said, sometimes you got to get to the end of your, your rope in your life in order to find God. And now he's celebrating with him in Kalamazoo, sitting next to him in church, and the guy's happy in Jesus' name. Give God a hand. Just heard that. So tell us just a little bit about yourself and then the skills you got. Because I was going to tell Noah privately, but we all need to know. So we all know you a little better. So uh, I'm Brandon. Uh, I have a passion for sound. Uh, anything related with audio. Um, my last passion is building uh, loudspeakers and setting up uh, concert equipment for concerts, festivals. Um, I was a DJ for a couple years. Um, uh, 
I installed car audio professionally uh, for a couple years, and that was my, you know, a, a desirable job instead of just washing dishes or, you know, delivering stuff. Um, it was last November. I was at the job site. I contracted COVID. I recovered. Was on quarantine for 30 days. That um, day, I went out to get some exercise on my bike. I got hit by a car. Um, but I recovered, you know, through physical therapy and treatment uh, injection therapy. Um, so it's been a tumultuous year with ups and downs. Um, nothing's really seemed certain, you know, lately. Uh, it's been kind of topsy turvy. Um, again, uncertain about my future and things, but, uh, you know, I'm not giving up. Uh, I know God has my back and, you know, he found me. Uh, he let me know that he loves me and he, you know, has, you know, uh, big things in store for me. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you know, I have people that fail me, I have systems that fail me, I have friends that fail me, family members that fail me, but I know deep in my heart, truth of God, that he loves me and, you know, he came to die for me so that you know, I can know his love, you know, um, that surpasses any relationship that I've had thus far. So I'm just grateful for that, you know. Um, yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let, let it be known to you and everybody, too, well, your family when you walk in here, okay? Yeah, we want you to feel comfortable, never any pressure, but we want you to know we're family, we're here for you guys. And, uh, yeah, I want you to talk in the side with Noah a little longer. Who knows, maybe he needs a little assistant to help out. Or maybe you can help train some of our guys a little further because Noah's got his hands full. But we got a few guys in the Jesus house that need to learn some things, especially sound, so Noah can get a break once in a while. We, we need that serious sound education. And I think you got it in. You set up concerts and everything. He's got the goods. Give God a hand. Amen. Amen. God bless you, buddy. Amen. You know, <laughs> well, I tell you, there's a lot more. So I met a brother here. I'll just say real quick, I met him out in front when I pulled up with my wife. And I had seen some lights uh, in another car down at the church down the street that we've always believed God for. You know the one down here that uh, Reverend Butler's son uh, purchased. So I've been wanting to connect with them. And I saw some extra lights, so I dropped off the lane at the front door. And I thought, I'm going to scoot back over there. Which usually I'll park and come in the front door, but tonight I felt led to turn around. When I turned around, I was going to go down there to look at a car that I saw some extra lights on. I seen this brother walking in the street out in front. So I hollered at him, and you know, and I'll just keep it real, like what the conversation was. And I said, hey, what's up, brother? And he goes, well, whatever. And I'd never seen him before. I asked him what his name was. He said, Cohen. I said, Cohen, that's, that's a, a Jewish name, right? He goes, well, yeah, yeah, and, you know, he was sort of saying this and that and whatever. But the bottom line is, he made an interesting comment. Can I say the comment you made, which is very interesting? He made a comment about, um, you know, Cohen, because I knew a guy named Bruce Cohen. I said, is that K-O-H-N or C-O-H-N? He said, C-O-H-N. I said, that's obviously a Jewish name to me. But he said, you know what? He said something I've never heard anybody say. He said, I wasn't allowed to be Jewish. And when I heard that, I thought, he must have, like, I just felt he had a Catholic mother and a Jewish father. And I said that to him. And he said, exactly, that's how I grew up. So he wasn't allowed to be Jewish. So I told him, get in the car with me. Get in the car with me, come for a ride. Let's go down, we can kick it while we're going out and then come back in. But uh, anyway, it's the first time he's been here. And you know what? We need, we need to reach out and be people peace persons. People need to be loved. They need to be respected and appreciated. That's something every one of us needs to learn to whatever degree. You can be the most introverted person on the planet, but when you come to Christ, the Bible says old things have passed away, including your introversion. That, that really passes away because now you're in Christ, and we know Jesus was extroverted. He went to the woman at the well. Amen? He went to others. He healed the blind. He, he cast out devils. He, 
He ministered to the multitudes. He was extroverted. And everyone that is his disciple is trained to be as him. You know, we're, if we're to be clones of anybody, it's Jesus, not people. So we can learn from one another. But the thing is, the Lord wants everyone to learn to reach out with the love of God to others. Because if we aren't doing that, and God's planted his love in our heart, we're literally wasting the love of God. Or you could say, wasting God in us. And if you think about that, that's pretty deep. You know, I, I could go and preach a lot about that, but the bottom line is God wants us to reach out. You know, don't ever let anybody feel like uh, they're the lone stranger, because the devil will make them feel like that. You know, the devil wants everybody to feel like, all oh, these people don't care, they're in another world, you know, they got money, I don't, or they're high class, I'm low class, I'm a low life, they're high life, or whatever you're thinking, but God didn't put that in you, the devil did. And the peacemakers, we want to know, we want you to know that we love you. I don't know if I've ever seen you before, brother. Have I ever met you before? You haven't been here before, have you? A couple days. Yeah, because I don't remember you. Anyway, what's your name? Melvin. Melvin Frazier? That's correct. Where are you from, Melvin? I'm from Nashville, Tennessee area. Okay. How long have you been up here? Uh, I've been, uh, I first come 1991 and uh, worked for the Diocese of Michigan. I moved back because all over. And I've been back this time for about five years. Well, awesome, because I didn't recognize you at all. But I see you sitting in the corner while I was talking. And that wasn't why I was talking about it. But when I was talking, I saw you. And I thought, man, he's all the way back there. I can go talk to him and see how he's doing. I've never seen anything like this happen before. I worked in ministry in several areas myself, but this is simply amazing. I mean, incredibly amazing. Well, I think, and we think you're amazing. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, bud. God bless. Thank you. I was just about to. Well, Melvin, I'm just Steve. Right. You can call me Brother Steve. I'm good with that. You can call me Brother Melvin. Brother Melvin, I love you. Brother Steve, baby. Now I'm seeing you. Now I remember you. So, but Melvin, God bless you, man. Nashville. Well, that could bring in a lot of thoughts, eh? I'm sure he's got a story. Did you notice he said he's been involved in ministry? Yep. When you really get into the depths of it, he could really blow our minds. He could be up here preaching a sermon next Sunday. It just might happen. You never know. You never know because there's gold in them in our hills. So, <laughs> so I think there's somebody here that i got to meet that I haven't met yet. Because I know the church, Hope Church. But Jeremiah said that guy over there with that purple stocking cap is a pastor. Well, i got to meet you. Come on up here, brother. Come on up here. Get up here. If he's a pastor, he should be shy. Right, Mark? So take, have I met you before? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, no, no, down no. here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Were you with Hope City then? Yeah, I was with Hope City, so Darren was uh, was the pastor there. And you came down with him. Yeah, you were yeah. in the church then. Give me a hug, brother. Uh, it's easy. Talk to us for a few minutes. All right? All right. I know you don't mind that. No, I, I don't mind. Go ahead, brother. Man, it, it is an honor to be here. The peacemakers, thank you. Thank you for just letting us serve you. Uh, well, you're welcome. We love you. Man, it's, it's, I, well, one of the things that uh, that we value at Hope City, like we just want to be like authentic. We just want to be a place where people can be real, people. have real problems, have real brokenness. I mean, that, that's my story. Uh, that's what we're we're built on, you know. Uh, and and it's okay to be broken because God's bigger than our brokenness. Yes, yes, yes. We, we're called Hope City because we want to be a place to remind people there is hope. There is hope for new life. There is hope in, in a God that's bigger Amen. than our circumstances. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was just reminding our, our, our congregation this morning, we're preaching on Christmas, and, and, and just talking about uh, Mary and Joseph and, and Jesus' birth, and that the angels show up and they say, uh, have joy. They could, God says, have joy. But look at their circumstances. They're living like livestock. They're in the stable. Right? And, and, and I mean, they're under... Roman rule, they're under oppression, and like, you know, God knows what's coming. God knows that there's a cross ahead for that little baby, but he says, have joy. Yeah. I'm bigger than this. Yeah. And I'm going to use even evil men 
evil circumstances, I'm going to use it for my glory and your good to redeem mankind. Amen. And that, and, and I preached that, I was preaching to myself this morning mm -hmm. because I am tired. I am weary. You know, I, I'm, I'm Pastor Hope City, but what we left off was the interim. I'm interim Pastor of Hope City. See, the, the, the lead guy, Darren, he was called some other uh, ministry, and so he, he handed off to me about a year ago. And, and so we've been kind of looking for a pastor or whatever, and, and so I'm doing, you know, regular job and, and the Hope City pastor job. And I got married eight months ago. Praise oh, God for that. Yeah, uh, yeah it's been But it's a lot going on. And I get yeah. to the end of the year, man. I'm tired, yeah. and uh, and I was preaching to myself this morning because I need to remember this is a season for joy, Amen. and Amen. joy doesn't come from my circumstances; it no. comes from God, yeah. Yeah. who loves me and made Himself low. Yeah. He came after me; I was lost. He yeah. found me, That's, yeah. and uh, and I, I I just I just love reminding myself of that. I want to remind you of that. That God yeah. made himself he came from heaven for you. Yeah, right. Made himself low mm -hmm. for you and for me. Mm -hmm. Because he knows we ain't never going to reach up to him. Mm -hmm. We're never going to find him. But he came to get us. He came to rescue us yeah. and invade our brokenness to say, I have wholeness and yeah. I can give it to you. Yeah. He can take his wholeness and make it ours. Yeah. Praise That's God right. for That's that. Right. I am honored and humbled just to be here, a part of just this authentic, real, just worship. Thank you. Thank you, peacemakers. Thank you, Pastor Steve, for, for just, like, letting us come and crash here and, and just, be, just be a part of, of you guys loving the Lord who has called, a, called you to himself. So thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hope City. You know, there's so much to be said. But you know what? This is the Christmas season. And we got to remember, the Bible says that uh, there was none righteous, no, not one. Everyone was sinning. Nobody was really seeking God. And yet God looked down. And I thought of this today, that he never, uh, never backed up on his promise. I was thinking of some other words, but he never backed up on his promise when, when Adam got ripped off by Satan in the garden. Because that's what happened. Here he had his choice. Man made in his image and likeness. The devil comes along, trick bags him and Eve. They sin, they're cut off. So, so man got stolen by the devil. And he made a promise in the book of Genesis that he was going to send a Savior. But through thousands of years of craziness, wildness, people rejecting, spitting in his face, demon-possessed people, all kinds of stuff. Even Noah and the flood destroyed everybody but eight souls, go through all that, and it says he even repented God that he had made man in the book of Genesis. He was but but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and he continued to keep his promise that he was gonna bring a savior through all the craziness of millions of people rejecting him, could care less. And yet he said, You know what? I'm gonna get my man. So Jesus came one day. Born of very humble circumstances, like our brother said. Mm -hmm. Cast out. No room for him in the end. And yet God appeared to three kings, sent him. And then Herod, uh, down the road, you know, went to kill all the kids two years and under. All kinds of stuff. But God still said, you know what? I'm going to the cross. I'm going to raise up my son. I'm going I'm to have him plant in Mary's womb. He's going to be raised up, and he is going to go rescue man that the devil stole. Lived his life, paid the price at the cross, a horrendous death. And then he said, it is finished. Now whosoever would believe in him and cling to him and trust in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. The lowest, most ruthless sinner, the most adulterous, killing maniac, the most mentally disturbed nutcase can come to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, have mercy on me, and he will wash you in the blood that he shed for you and make you his child, and you'll just be righteous as he is. You'll be clothed with his righteousness, and now you can go to heaven because of what he did for you. He never gave up on us. He could have, but he never shut down his promise. Once he said it, he kept his word. I think everybody loves a person that will keep their word. 
So how about us taking that for our Christmas gift? Let's learn to be a man or woman of our word. We say something, let's do it. And they say sometimes, if you say something, do it to your own hurt. Because that will be an example that you are different. Because most people don't honor their word. Most people are just low life and could care less, just slinging stuff out. But when we learn to be a man or woman of integrity and back up what we say, with our words, with our life, with our actions, people look at us and they say, you're different. What is it that makes you tick? You say it's a Savior. It's Jesus. I'm just so blessed that he had mercy on me. I'll just close with this one thought. When I met the Lord in 1974, I was not looking for God. I was so far from God, he never entered into my consciousness. God had great mercy on me because he came out of left field and manifested himself beyond undisputable proofs to let me know he was alive, but also that the devil was alive. He shocked me into a spiritual reality that I did not know exist. It was only his grace and mercy, nothing that had to do with me, but he let me know beyond undisputable proofs, boom! I'm real. And <laughs> the devil's real. What you gonna do? In 25 years of just ruined my life for me, never think about God, all of a sudden I was instantly transformed in my thinking, shocked to my core that there was a spiritual world that existed. And a God, eventually I realized how much mercy he had on me to come on me like he did. Because God's allowed me to escape death over and over and over, before and after that. It's called mercy, which endures forever, and the grace of God that he gives on us for whatever reason. But I figured y'all are. Nobody's being carried out of here in a, in a you know, casket or anything yet. So we're still alive. We have an opportunity to live for God for real and show people that Jesus is real. So this Christmas, be a light. If you're in a shelter, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Give him glory. You're still breathing on this side of the grave. I've been homeless. I know what it's like to be on the streets addicted and crazy. But God will have mercy on you and bless you as long as you look to him. And that's what God wants to do during this season. To let people know that he's real, that you can know him despite your circumstances. Or whatever's happening in your life has nothing to do with the fact that God will take you and mold you and shape you into something that you can't even imagine. But it's up to you to let God come into your life and say, okay, Lord. I see what's up. You're knocking on the door of my heart, bring it on. But you heard about total surrender tonight. <laughs> That's a key. If you don't give it up, you ain't going to see what I'm talking about. But if you give me a life for real and let God come in, full throttle, whole hog, let's do this, then you empty yourself of you, and he comes in and he can manifest himself any way he chooses. And you'll be surprised at what he does to you and eventually through you but you got to open up and let them run your show. So if you want God for real, let's close our eyes for a minute. If you want God for real and you've never done that, if you've been backslidden, and you think God's given up on you, first of all, that's a lie. As long as there's breath in your body, there's hope. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and he died for your sins and rose from the dead according to the Scriptures, and you want to be restored, or you want to know him from Jump Street. I want you to pray this prayer loud enough to hear yourself say it. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. And thank you, Lord, for being good to me and letting me live this long to hear your voice and know you're knocking on the door of my heart. I welcome you, Father, in the name of Jesus, into my heart to take full possession, full control of this flesh. Wash me in your blood, Jesus, and make me into the kind of person you want me to be. I'm yours, Lord. Have your way. And thank you for having mercy on me. That's how it works. Say thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Amen. God thinks you're special, brother. Father, we thank you. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Praise God. I'm not going to make Mark get up here and strum another song. So you got that text. I'll probably have to leave pretty soon. Mark, again, we love you. Love all you guys. And let's love one another and talk to one another now while we're fellowshipping, okay? Don't be too quick to run out the door unless you got to. Somebody needs to hear your voice say, hey, how are you doing? What's your name? 
I never met you before. Yeah. Jeremiah's a good extrovert. Give God a hand for Jeremiah. Uh. Married a wonderful girl. Yeah. Jeremiah, why don't you close this and get us ready for the Amen. next stage of whatever's going on. Amen. You're good instant in season. Amen. Well, Lord, we thank you for this good night. In Jesus' name. Yeah. We ask you to bless the food. Bless the gifts that are going to be passed out shortly. Bless the people that receive the gifts. Have your way in our lives. Help us to just be witnesses and shine bright for you this week. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So. Amen. So we're bringing the food out now, so stick around. There is food available. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Oh, you're all right, brother. You're all right. Hey, Melvin, God bless you, brother. <laughs> You've had two heart attacks and one stroke in 30 days? Well, we got to pray for you, brother. Why don't you come right up here? Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. We will have you share that. In fact, if you can come on a Thursday night, it's more personal. Okay. Okay? Even if you come this Thursday. But we'll come pick you up. Yeah, and there's going to be people who want to hear your story. Yeah. So, Melvin, yes. Yeah. Okay, I want to hear. In fact, I'm going to go in my office in a minute, and you and I will sit down and talk for a minute and bring your food in there and talk to me a little taste. Okay. All right. So, y'all be blessed. Don't be stressed. Have a good Christmas season. I pray the glory on you. Hey, let's hear a little music, Noah. Are you behind that? Everybody. Yeah. Turn it up. See, Noah has some sense. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. To our God, brother, good seeing you tonight, man. Love you, man. I'm glad you're here tonight. And you're going to make it, too. You come this far, and God ain't going to let you down. God bless you, man. Hey, David. This is Brother David. This is 17 years in prison, and he's a Christian now. I love David. We love you, brother. God bless you. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Come on. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Yeah. Sing hallelujah. This is Betty. I think she's about 39 years old, and I'm 22. This is Betty, my redheaded buddy. God bless you, Betty. We love you. And you've had visions of Jesus coming back. You've had visions of Jesus coming back. So keep your eyes on the eastern skies. All right, all right, Betty. Hey, what you got there, young man? What? What? Potatoes? Who made them? Okay. Let's see what we got for food here, folks. Yeah, we're going to be holding more. Okay. Right now, I'm trucking Monday through Friday. Say hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah to our God. Yes, son. Every praise, every praise. Is to our God. Hallelujah. Thanks for coming, brother. We love you, man. Thank you, sir. I want to hear more from you, man. Good to see you. Hey, say hi to your wife, too, man. I ain't seen her in a long time. 
You gotta love people, right, my brother? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love flows through you. And even our hillbilly friend. Love my Kentucky brother. Weren't you in the Marine Corps? You were in the... Huh? What's that? Which battleship? Back in the 70s. Back in the 70s? Praise God, bro. 50 caliber? God bless you, man. Well, thanks for thanks for putting your time in the military, brother. God loves you, bro. Okay? You're a blessing, man. I love our vets a lot. You guys have fought to keep us out here so we can preach the gospel. Thanks, bro. Oh, excuse me. All right, so we're out of here. Me and my wife say goodbye. Elaine, let's say Merry Christmas together to everybody before this goes. This is the last service we'll have before Christmas. <laughs> so this is my wife and I saying Merry Christmas to y'all. Amen. Aren't you glad Jesus was sent to earth to get us? Yeah, but, but here another year has come along. Hello, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not scared. That woman has fought the good fight with me for almost 50 years. She's put her time in, and I'll tell you what. I'm scared. Yeah, well, yeah. She has not had an easy boat to row following my act. But uh, God bless you, Elaine. We're going to have a good Christmas, and we all want you to have a good Christmas. So for me, Elaine... And Chief Sitting Bull, God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas in Jesus' name.